everyone, it's Plastic EP coming in. There's only 11 shows to go to a 1,000. We uh, can't ask for more than that. We're on track. I just did a big interview right with Steve Binder. He did the 1968 Elvis comeback special. I want everyone to watch that. He also has just done now a new documentary film called Reinventing Elvis, the 68 comeback. We discussed that now in an interview that I did yesterday. Please go to the Plastic EP live TV page on YouTube or my Facebook page. I've got two of them. One of his Plastic EP, the other one's called Daniel Sam. And I want to welcome Paul Brett from the UK and Mr. Shampoo. Yeah, well, I mean, firstly, congratulations on nearly reaching your thousand shows. That's an incredible effort. So uh, you're very prolific in the, in your interviews and you must have spoken to very many important people. So uh, congratulations. I'm looking forward to the uh, thousandth show. So, yeah, excellent stuff. Talking about the Beatles fretless guitar in my book, Finding Fretless. And a key character in that book was a guy called Al Casey, who was a session player in uh, in the USA um, back in the day for the you know the, the wrecking crew players, the top session players, the, the 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 top top guys that played for all the big names. Now he gave the fretless guitar to the Beatles, but the other interesting thing, at exactly the same time in 1968, he's also working with Elvis Presley um, as a session player for the 68 comeback special. So the red Hagstrom guitar that is that bright red guitar that you see Elvis playing on the 68 comeback special when he's got his black leathers on and everything. Al Casey was the guy that lent him that guitar for the show. Producers wanted something that looked good. And that was what Al Casey had. And they said, that's great. Can he borrow it? So Al Casey was responsible for lending a guitar to Elvis at the time and the Beatles. So he was in with the right people. Now, Funny thing is, when he um, finished, when they finished recording the 68 comeback special, it was only loaned to Elvis. Uh, Al kept the guitar. All right. Contrary to some reports that say it was Elvis's guitar. It wasn't. It was Al's guitar. He kept it. And he actually tried selling that guitar for about four hundred dollars and he couldn't get a buyer. Anyway, eventually. Actually, many years later, he did manage to sell it and get a... I, I don't know what he got for it, actually, but, I mean, it must have been a reasonable sum, but nowhere near what it's been reported now. About two years ago, um, it went up for auction. When I was writing my book and I was researching it, I was amazed to see it come up for auction. And I, I watched the auction live, and it went for half a million dollars, all right? It was about, about three years ago, all right? Now, I now know, having done some research on this, that... About a year later, it was auctioned again, and it went for $750,000. So, you know, the, the price is going up. Well, literally, just 10 days ago, there was a big announcement that the guitar is now valued at, would you believe, $5 million, all right, for this guitar that was only loaned to Elvis for the 68 Comeback Special. OK, so it's shot up in price, but it must be, I think, in relation to, you know, the film that, that was out just recently with Baz Luhrmann and everything. And, um, you know, to find out that that guitar that he couldn't get 400 bucks for once upon a time is now possibly the world's most expensive guitar when it goes up for auction. Um, I, I think Kurt Cobain's went for about six million. Um, but if it's estimated at five million now, and it goes up for auction with all the hype that's behind it. Who knows? It could become the world's most expensive guitar. Who knows? I just want to say there was a party a couple of days ago. There was pictures on the net of celebrities walking around at this party with the actual guitar. Do you know about that? Yeah, there was a there was a charity do in London. Yeah, and um, Rod Rod Stewart was there. That's it. And um, a British actress called Joanna Lumley. Yeah, and is very famous here. They got and, photos uh, with the guitar. Yeah, that's it. The photos. So, um, I, I, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't part of the, their auction, but it was on display. I think there's a display in London coming up. It might be part of that. That might be why it's over here. But um, yeah, it's hot news at the moment. Um, Elvis's guitar. Now, it's a little side story to that. Obviously, on the '68 comeback special, he's using the, Elvis is using the guitar. But he's also using Al Casey's amplifier that he had, which was called a Benson, a Benson amplifier. Now, it's a slightly interesting story to this because when my Finding Fretless story came out, there was a guy called Richard Bennett, all right, who's a guitar player 
very well known in Nashville, but he's been a guitar player for Neil Diamond and for Mark Knopfler for many years. All right. Tours and albums and all that kind of stuff. Richard Bennett used to work with Al Casey when he was a young boy in his music room in Hollywood. All right. And he ended up with the amplifier that was used on a 68 comeback special. So Richard Bennett has got the amplifier. All right. Somebody else is going to pay five million dollars for the guitar. Yeah, if you wanted to bring the story together and, you know, and combine the two. Um, but I'm sure Richard, you know, he, he wouldn't want to get um, let the amplifier go. It's um, part of his history, really. So I wouldn't blame him if he kept it. Now, i got to ask you about the Beatles' secret guitar, right? Once yep. we broke the story and no one knew about it in the U.S., to me it's the most fascinating mm -hmm. thing because it's not documented in guitar books. No, but this is true, and this is, this is the sort of... Um, this is the controversial thing about it, really, is we, we, you know, we broke the story. We know exactly when, how and who provided the guitar to the Beatles. We know that Neil Aspinall ordered it in secret um, after going to a session in Hollywood um, in um, yeah, August 1967. All right. And he ordered it from Al Casey and they got it for George Harrison up to Blue Jay Way. It came back to London, and then the next we hear about it is June 1968, when John Lennon's playing it in the studio, all right? And we've still got the tape recording of that, um, just an, a, an interview with a DJ over here, when he says, I'm playing a fretless guitar. So we know it's in the studio. Now, we know also from testimony of a good friend of George Harrison's, who knew him for 30 years, uh, who's a guitar player himself, and they spoke about Many, many things, obviously. But they did speak about the fretless guitar. And he says, yeah, they definitely used it on a couple of tracks. He said, he told me, he said, there are two pictures of it somewhere, of it being in Studio 2 in Abbey Road, but we've never found them. All right. So, you know, a picture would tell a thousand words, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah? I've already, you know, spoken to people. Have you got one photo of the fretless Guitar. So we're on yeah. it. We're just waiting for something to surface. And I'm sure something will surface. One day. One day I'm sure it'll pop up somewhere. I mean, I, I was very lucky to find a picture of uh, George Harrison uh, at his house with his guitar collection. And it's, you know, there's a picture of him with all his guitars and it's right by him. I mean, without doubt, you can see it there. So, but the contentious thing is, was it ever used on any tracks on the White album? All right. Which is they were recording at the time. Now, all right. Um, if you go to my website, findingfretless.com, there's a discography section and you can look at the Beatles tracks that we suggest that it was used on. But the evidence is strong, all right, because we've had three different, well, two different professors of, of music, both fretless experts, listen to the White Album without any encouragement to spot particular tracks to see if they could identify a fretless guitar. It is different to using a slide, and, and but you have to have the ear for it, you know. Okay, now these two guys both came up with the same two tracks, Happiness as a Warm Gun and Helter Skelter. In their opinion, okay, they say that that is definitely a fretless guitar. Now, the other guy who is a music professor is Ray Russell, who was the guy who owned the guitar that um, George Harrison gave it to him, all right, in 1985. And he had it up until 19, uh, 2020 when he auctioned it, obviously. Now, he had the guitar and he can hear hear it. You know, you have to have the ear for it. And he says, yeah, I, you know, he, no doubt he can hear it on the White Album as well. OK. And there is some other evidence as well. But the important thing is, since Peter Jackson um, did his um, get back sessions, you know, they can isolate tracks now individually. Yes. Yeah. And, and so they they used um machine learning and artificial intelligence um, to, um, like you say, separate out all the background noise. So they even had private conversations in the studio. So say Paul and, and um, John wanted to have a, have a chat about something or a bit, a bit of a moan about what was going on in the studio. Um, the, it was all being recorded live all the time. So they would just turn their amplifiers up and just strum rubbish on the guitar so they couldn't be heard and they could have the conversation. Now, Peter Jackson and his crew have managed to get rid of all the background noise, even Ringo playing on the drums, get rid of all of that 
so they can now hear those conversations that those guys were having that they weren't supposed to hear. So it's incredible what they can do with artificial intelligence now. So the only way I think for me ever to really prove that um, you know this threat is, is definitely on White Album, well, either Paul McCartney or Ringo have got to phone me up and say, Paul, you're right. OK, and can't imagine that happening. Um, or somehow we've got to identify the, the, the sonic signature and the DNA of that specific instrument. And I think with the help of artificial intelligence, maybe not now, but maybe in the not too distant future, they might be able to isolate that sonic signature of that particular instrument. And then they can apply that across all the tracks that were recorded at that time and see if they can identify that. Kenny Everett had interviewed the Beatles when they were doing the White Album, and John Lennon was heard playing it while he was interviewing him, so they didn't see it, but they heard him play yeah. and they called it the Mad Guitar. That's it. Because, yes, it. Because I'm a bass player, and I play on a fretted instrument, so you've got a little bit of give. But when you play on a fretless instrument, if you're not precise, you're going to be sharp or flat, and you can slide on these guitars. You can um, yeah. get a lot more sustain. You get different mm -hmm. type of resonation because you get more sustain because there's no fret buzz. Okay, it's like people that play violin; they can yeah, tell. yeah. You're you're right. You're exactly right, Mr. Shampoo. And and the thing is, um, you called it. Um, uh, well, George used to call it fret sparkle. Yeah, fret sparkle. You know, is is exactly the sort of thing you would get on a fretted instrument. Right. Uh, George Harrison played a lot of guitar. Indian, Indian influence so he, as well. So he was used to playing with slides and all kinds of weird tunings. And, you know, so he could play this fretless probably better than, you know, John, because he was used to a radical, like this is a radical instrument for the 60s because, you know, fretless basses were starting to come, but not guitars. He just, there wasn't a reason to do it. So somebody exactly. did it. And that's why the Beatles used it because they needed something that, like you have to understand, you know that this guitar was not used to the whole song. It was just used in overdub for leads or something. They wanted something different. So this guitar, they remembered, it was sitting in a locker. You know who delivered it to um, George? It. Or, or it was it was Maureen, which was uh, Al Casey's wife, the, the Blue Jay Way. She delivered it to them. After the Beatles broke up, it went to Friar Park to 1985, and he gave it to uh, that fellow, Ray Russell, when they were doing Water, which is handmade film. Yeah, exactly. So George has given a lot of people guitars. He gave um, Badfinger, you know, his SG, you know, he's given, yeah, yeah. you know, lots of guitars. His Telecaster, he gave that away. He was a very generous guy. He was indeed. Yeah, he was. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a production guitar. It was a prototype, yeah. and there was only very few yeah, made. that's right. It was the first one, exactly. The and we only know one. of three that exist today. Um, that's right, th that's right. Yeah, so, you know, they're very, very rare. There's a beautiful guitar company that makes vintage guitars, and they're called Eastwood Guitars. Now, they're making this guitar yeah. as close as the original as possible. And, you know, they're sold out. So people are buying these guitars yeah. and using them on track. So they were, you know, you could say this guitar was way ahead of its time. Way ahead oh, of absolutely. Time. Yeah, and it's nice to uh, see a bit of a, a resurgence in, in, in fretless guitars um, in recent years as well. So, um, yeah, it has shown a, a bit of interest in it for sure. Yeah, definitely. Actually, you, you know, you're saying about uh, Maxine Casey taking it up to Blue Jay Way. Well, the reason right. for that was that Al Casey was always busy on sessions. And it's quite likely that he was busy on the Elvis session on the Six Day Comeback special mm -hmm. at the time. So he couldn't give the guitar to the Beatles. He was with Elvis. There you That's go. right. And Paul, I know, I know you've written this fabulous book, and I have done my research. It was August the 1st, 1967, when that guitar was delivered by Maureen. Uh, yeah, it was, it was there thereabouts because um, the session that they went to um, on the Western Recorders studio, that's it. So um, that's where they first saw it, actually. Yeah. And Blue Jay Way is where they were staying in Los Angeles, so, and there's a song about that. Indeed, yeah, Blue Jay Way, yeah. Yeah, when I was waiting, he was waiting for his friend to turn up and he got lost and, in the fog. And I don't know if this is true, but I've read this, that the professors that you were talking about had suggested that this guitar was possibly used on Savoy Truffle. Yeah, there's a number There's a number of tracks. There's, um, they have identified it down to you know various minutes. So, again, if you look at my, my website now, I mean, the book is Finding Fretless. 
and findingfretless.com is the website. If you look at the discography section under the Beatles, you'll see the tracks that we suggest that the fretless is being used on. And we identify, you know, it's at minute 130 or minute 340 or whatever, you know. Can you tell everybody now where they can buy your book? Go to findingfretless.com and you can buy it directly from the website and I can send it out to you worldwide. Congratulations, as I said, on the book. It's a worldwide seller. Let's keep it out there, and we'll do another show once we've got more information. Thanks so much for being on the show, Paul and uh, Mr. Shampoo.